Welcome everyone to this pastel demonstration of how to paint a robin sitting inside the iron gates. I am using UART sanded paper 600 grit for this demonstration. UART sanded paper will come in different grades of sanded paper. There's 400, 500, 600, which I typically use, and 800 grit paper. The 600 grit paper that I'm using is a very fine grit so that I'm able to apply fine details to my painting. As I begin this project, my goal is to lay down some color uh, for the background so that I can blend it to create some of a blurry effect to the background. The small sponge applicators do a good job of blending the colors in the background very smoothly. I'm not concerned with the background color overlapping objects in the foreground at this point. Once I start working on the foreground gate, those areas of color will be covered. I am using my Prismacolor medium hard pastel sticks to apply the first layers to the background of this painting. The advantage of using the harder pastel sticks is that it doesn't fill the tooth of the paper too quickly. There's still plenty of tooth left in the paper after I've blended this first layer of color. I'm going to focus on one section at a time. I want to create a realistic look to my iron gate. In order to achieve a realistic look, it's important to lay down the correct values as the base of the iron gates. Then I can add black as the darkest layers uh, in the shadows. To give the iron bars more interest, I will add some shades of dark blue and turquoise to the metal. This will give it a natural look as iron oxidizes with the green color. Here I'm repeating the same process of, of using the dark gray as my base and then I'll use black to create the dark areas and shadows in the metal. Once blended, I'll add some colors of blue and turquoise to add highlights and a natural appearance to the iron gates. I will continue to define the iron bars and then I'll come back later to add more details and texture to give it a very realistic appearance. Now that I've achieved some definition to the bars, I'm going to finish the background in this top section of my painting before I begin working on the robin. So please continue to follow along as I shade in this area.
Now that I've blocked in the background to this section, I'd like to start developing our bird. I need to apply a light coat of pastel to create a base to work from. And again, I'm using my new pastels that are small sticks and a firm uh, pastel so that I don't fill in the tooth of the paper uh, too quickly. Since I'm working in such a small area, the paper tortillions uh, are great blending stumps for these small areas. I'm trying to block in the shapes and base colors within the bird before I begin any of the details in the feathers. I will zoom up here so you can follow along more closely. I want to begin defining some of the darkest shadows in the bird's breast feathers. It's important to define some of these shapes before adding any detail to the bird. There are a lot of shadows being cast onto the bird, so I'm going to use my black pastel pencil very lightly to define some of the darkest areas in the bird's belly. Then I'll come back with a, a light shade of gray to blend some of this color in that area. I would like to start defining the feathers in the bird's wing. I've added a cream color for a base so as I add more colors over it, it will blend more easily and more smoothly. I will use my black pencil to separate the individual feathers in his wing. Once I have outlined these feathers in his wing, I'll be able to add some shades of brown and even light orange to the tips of his feathers. I will continue shaping them and adding some more color. And then I will go back and with a sharp point on my black pencil, try to create a very sharp, crisp line between each of these fine feathers. I would like to start defining the beak of the bird by using my black pencil to create the dark shadows. So here I've achieved a good rendering of the bird and the darkest values and colors within the bird's body. So at this point I can begin adding more details and more color to bring out the fullness of the bird's feathers. The sun is casting some light on the bird's feathers so I will use some light yellow and light orange to highlight these small feathers. The development of the bird's feathers is a time intensive process of working an area and reworking it again. It takes several layers uh, of color to build it up and achieve sufficient saturation in color and details. I will use a combination of light gray and white to begin developing the fullness in the breast and belly area of the bird. We want to create a soft fluffy texture to the downy feathers in his belly and these will also create a highlight as they puff out and create a more soft uh, appearance and texture. I will go back and define the shadowed areas a little more and finish the bird by applying the final highlights to the surface level of the feathers. Thank you. 
there is a small ray of light being cast onto the bird and the iron bars next to it. As I add more color and details to the iron bars, I want to ensure that I capture the reflecting light on its surface. It is a subtle point of interest, but definitely brings focus to our bird in the painting. I am using light gray to create this illusion of light, and I'm careful not to blend it too much to maintain the texture in the iron. I will add a little more of the turquoise green to create more of that natural oxidation occurring on the iron. I think I'm at a good point now where I can move on and start working on the bottom portion of this painting. I'm going to use a very dark gray to shape the flat bar beneath the iron bars. I will blend and then add a darker shade again and blend some more. And I will pay close attention to the reflective areas in the iron bar. I will use light gray and white to highlight the areas where sunlight touches the bars. So now I'm going to finish the ornamental design in the bottom portion of the painting. So please follow along as I develop this area and once this is complete I will add the final details to our bird and other small details to complete the painting.
Once the entire painting is nearly done, it's much easier to see what areas need a little more contrast, a little more detail, uh, when we have a reference to compare to. I will follow my reference photo a little more closely to determine the placement of the very fine little feathers and any other uh, shadowed areas and contrast needed in the painting. I have really enjoyed working on this piece and I hope you have enjoyed this demonstration as well. Please feel free to add your comments or ask any questions and I will be happy to respond. I have enjoyed sharing this composition with you. I look forward to sharing more demonstrations and lessons with you in the near future. If you liked this video, please press like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you.